Thank you. Please be seated. Your next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Amber, I'm going to take you up to March of 2013. Um, can you describe your relationship with Mr. Depp during that month? And we'll start there. I remember um, that was after a period of uh, really some, it was after a period of some peace and then um, he, in sobriety, Johnny was sober, um, drinking Bex. And my uh, dad, uh, who was struggling with alcohol um, and drug addiction at the time, had fallen off the wagon. And, and I remember he said, why don't we send a, I want to send a picture to, you, to your dad of support, because uh, yeah, my sister was upset with my dad. Um, and so, uh, he poured a shot and, um, and, and, and kind of said, let's take a picture. Uh, I don't, I don't drink spirits, but I, I, I know that, you know, I kind of held up in that picture. It's kind of eerie because I just think it's bizarre. He had broken this long period of sobriety that I thought was going to be the, the end of him drinking forever. I sounds foolish now, but I, you know, held up this kind of glass with him and we sent the picture to my dad because, you know, I didn't know what else to do. And I remember thinking it was weird that he was drinking. And, um, and then the month got really crazy from that point on. It was, um, a bit of, um, a revolving door of accusations. Uh, he was accusing me of having affairs with, um, well, frankly, just one person I had an, I was an acquaint, I had an acquaintance with somebody and he was accusing me of, of, um, of, of being with them. And then he was accusing me of being with my friend, the one I had seen in Spain. Uh, I, I'm, you know, in these kind of arguments, nothing I do is working. I've, uh, walking out of the room, is me leaving him, walking away from me, you know, hey, where are you going? I'm talking to you. That It, it went from that to um, pulling me in by, by my arm, um, still shouting at the, about the accusations. Um, I'm trying to diffu diffuse the situation by trying to tell him I'm not sleeping with this person and I'm not sleeping with that person. And it was kind of, as soon as it seemed as though I had convinced him of one, there was somebody else he was sure I was sleeping with. Um, and he, it was a revolving door at that time. Um, a painting I had hanging on the wall done by my ex, who's an artist. That was, one day he, he was convinced that that was proof I was sleeping with her, or having an affair with her. I didn't really love him. And all the while I'm madly in love with him and trying to convince him. So March, started with this picture of him doing a shot and he's kind of saying let's send it to your dad to show support and what i remember of march is just uh, like an almost no it's almost like it was a never-ending fight it was just there were breaks in it what kept me in it is because because i kept waiting for the other shoe to drop you know the sobriety shoe if you will i kept waiting for him to get to the point where it's not supportable or anymore and he's done with it and he's ready to get clean and sober again because there commences a period of like pure joy. And it was one fight after the other, March. So, so let me start with the painting incident. Please tell the jury what happened on that particular incident with the painting. Uh, as I mentioned, the painting which had been hanging there for uh, months, uh, one day he, he kind of stayed up doing cocaine, just drinking, doing cocaine music, which is un not in and of itself that weird in my relationship with Johnny at this point, you know, like he stays up and keeps weird hours and you know, smokes and stuff. But the, the, he was drinking um, brown liquor and doing a lot of cocaine and it was like it became clear to me in that argument if you will that it what he wasn't making sense he had effectively just 
taken, it seemed like, a turn and had decided that the painting was the big, the, an offense that he could not forgive me for. It meant I was having an affair with my ex-partner, whom I had already split, with whom I had already split, and it made no sense to me. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of quell the accusations by saying, you know, it's been there, and what are you talking about? And it's like, that doesn't mean anything. And, you know, he was demanding I take it down. He eventually takes it down and tries to burn it, but it was unsuccessful, luckily, because he was not, he, he didn't, he wasn't, <laughs> with a uh, one of those normal, what do you call them, thick lighters, he wasn't very successful at doing it while drinking um, to the extent he was. But I remember it was this kind of, ridiculous fight like didn't feel like it needed to be an argument but it seemed like nothing I could do nothing I could say I uh, tried leaving I um, left the room I left the house I eventually came back it was it was like a whole night of an evening a night and then a morning of this so this morning in particular, I think it was the like 22nd of, of March there were several incidents in March though. Um, but in this particular one, he had something to go to. He was filming with Keith Richards and um, uh, Tom Waits. Well, let, let me, before you go into that part, let's, let's pull up uh, Defendant's Exhibit 161, which is already admitted into evidence, I believe, Your Honor. Yes, 161 with redactions. Is Thank you. Evidence. And I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. And the date on this is 3-12-2013, and it's a text exchange between you and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? I do. Okay. Um, and the first one is from you to Mr. Depp. Just thought you should know there exists a book. Is that to you? Is it to Mr. Depp from you, or it's vice versa? Isn't um, it? It's Johnny texting me. Just thought you should know there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. And then you say, we need that book. And you say, is this about last Friday night by any chance? And he says, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? Uh, and I'm not going to repeat the rest of it. Um, could you tell the jury what happened on that Friday night? Um... There were, like I said, there was a few different incidents in March. Um, I believe this one happened in the Eastern Columbia building, which is one of Johnny's penthouses. They're in downtown, so a different part of Los Angeles. And we'd sometimes go there. Uh, I remember he was accusing me, again, of um, sleeping with this artist, this musician who I'd never slept with. Um, I was denying it. I, I barely knew the person. Uh, and then he was accusing me of, of, of sleeping with my friend in, in Spain. Um, and I, I remember nothing I could do. He like called this person on the phone and screamed at, screamed at him. Um, he didn't speak English. So he was really confused as to what he was being yelled at by Johnny. Um, but I remember those were the accusations. That, that was the fight. That, it, but it was one to the next accusation. And I remember I was kind of doing that juggling act. I was in his one of these fights. I believe it's this one in his downtown ECB. We call it um, loft. And we're in the kitchen living room area. And he backhands me. And you know, it was. Um, you know, he wears a lot of rings. Uh, I remember kind of just feeling like the, my lip went into my teeth. And uh, it got a little blood on the wall. It, just that simple, a little bit of blood on the wall. As hard as it is, as hard as it is to explain this, I, I was so caught up in the relationship and also very occupied in defending what I only as could assume he believed, these accusations. Um, 
that, you know, I didn't, I didn't internalize, like, I didn't make that big of a deal of it. I'm, you know, I kind of pride myself on being tough and, you know, I don't make a big deal out of, you know, smaller injuries. And I know that sounds horrible because it, and hard maybe to understand, but, um, I mean, my best way to cope with it is I kind of, you know, minimize it, make, make, make sure no one, <clears throat> make sure he knows that I'm, I'm tough and can't knock me down and I make a joke of it, clearly. Make light. I'm going to, uh, Michelle, if you can take this one down and um, bring up 170A. Did there come a time in March, Amber, where you sent a picture to your mom? Uh, yes, this is um, sometime in March, uh, 2013. I just I I sent it to her because I had been texting about some of the craziness, and I objection hearsay. I'll sustain as to what she may have texted. All right, next question. Uh, it, Without saying what you said in the text, explain why you were sending it to your mom. I was reaching out. Uh, I was very lonely in what I was living in. And I wanted help. I wanted advice, help. And some, I just wanted to talk to somebody okay. and figure out how I could make this stop. And, and is this a picture that you took of yourself in March of 2013? I did. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 170A. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 170A in evidence. You can publish the picture. Thank you, Your Honor. And how did you sustain that bruise, Amber? Um... I was, I had thrown a, um, I, well, I, Johnny slapped me, I walked away from him and that made it worse. We got into like a, a shouting match. Um, and he kind of did this thing with his body where I could tell he was gonna hit me again. Um, I picked up a, like a, I remember it kind of like a, um, awkward, like a little pot, not a pot, but um, like a vase. And uh, I, I remember um, I got away from him enough as he reels back. I threw it in his direction and got, actually managed to get away before he got it, before he got me. Um, he grabbed me by the arm um, and he kind of just held me on the floor screaming at me. Um, I don't know how many times he hit me in the face, but... Uh, I, re I remember being on the floor of my apartment and I'm just, I remember thinking, how can this happen to me again? Can you bring up 170? Michelle, and if we can, I'm just for, to start, it's 3-23-2013, and if we can scroll, scroll up. This is a text message exchange with your mom, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go, I mean, scroll down, I mean. Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay. Right, let's wait until we get to the spot. All right, and is this the picture that you sent to your mom on 323 2013? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 170 just that, that picture that's on the text. With, with, Along no, with, with no words? Uh, well, it says from two weeks ago no. on it. Uh, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. If we redact the from two weeks ago, can we admit it then? And then just have the 
showing that she sent it to her mom. May we approach your honor? Okay. All right, 170 will be in evidence with redactions. And may we publish to the jury, please? All right. And that's the picture you sent to your mom? Yes, it is. On March 23rd, 2013. Yes, it was from a previous fight. Okay. The bruise. All right. Now, did you have any other altercations in March 2013 with Mr. Depp? Yes. I, um, we had um, we had a couple of these fights in Orange that were around this time, one of which I started to tell you about the painting. You know, and I know I've interrupted you now twice on that, but I realize the jury doesn't. Can you tell them what you mean by orange, at orange? Uh, sorry, orange was my apartment that I kept in Los Angeles at the time. And it was an apartment, what type of an apartment? I rented the top of a duplex. So it was a house um, with the landlord living on the bottom floor. I rented the top floor. Okay. Thank you. Now, please continue with the painting. I'm sorry. Um, I, nothing I could, it seemed like nothing I could say to Johnny would convince him. He wanted me to remove the painting. Um, and he wanted me to admit to this affair that I wasn't having. And I didn't want to admit to it because it's not true. So I held out, and he just started, I mean, he just drank more and did more cocaine. And I woke up the next morning, I think it was on the 22nd or the 23rd, I woke up in the morning and he was, the breakfast table was like cocaine and booze. And I realized that there, that I wasn't going to be able to talk my, like I wasn't going to be able to talk our, 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 our situation down. I wasn't gonna be able to talk him out of it. And he was just so convinced that I was fighting with him or, or, or at the reason that he wouldn't leave the house and he had something to go film that was important. And there were important people waiting for him. And I remember people were reaching out his assistants, his manager, sister, you know, everyone was wondering where he was. And I, kind of, I kept feeling embarrassed and unable to move this person out of my house. I couldn't calm him down. I couldn't change. He was just so intent on me admitting the details of this affair that I, I wasn't having. And me pointing out that the cocaine wasn't making his situation any better made me the bad cop. Then I'm the nag. Um, so eventually I called my sister uh, he had a kind of a buddy-buddy relationship with her at the time. And at the time, she occasionally did cocaine. I didn't, but she did. And so I was like, hey, come take over. You know, maybe you can buddy-buddy him and talk him into leaving the house, just getting out of the house. And she did. Um, I remember his assistants trying to get him out. Like, we eventually, in the evening, I think early evening, he finally... Um, agrees to leave, but I can't tell our relationship status. I can't tell if he still is convinced of these things or if he's just going to sleep it off and it's going to go back to 
normal sobriety, sorry kind of phase. And uh, he was still upset, but uh, like seemingly calming down. So I, I agreed to go with him. He wanted me to go to the to the the shoot. Um, I had plans, so I kind of reluctantly agreed, but didn't want to set anything off. I didn't want to engage anymore. I didn't want to do anything that could be perceived as antagonizing him or engaging more. So I went with him. We grab the dogs. We get in the car. We're on the way there. We're headed up Sweetser's the street. It's a major street that um, leads up to Johnny's houses. Um, he effectively owns the end of the street. It's like a cul-de-sac. Um, so we're nowhere near his home, but we are driving up this street, and uh, he has the window down. He's smoking. Um, it wasn't all the way down, but you know he's constantly smoking. And at some point, he starts howling out of the window, and then grabs two small dogs. Well, one was Johnny's dog, and one was my dog. But he grabs, if I if I remember correctly, Boo the the his his dog, um, slightly chunkier um, teacup Yorkie, and he grabs this teacup Yorkie and holds Boo out of the window of the moving car, and he's howling like like an animal while holding the dog out of the window, and everyone in the car I'll never forget it. Everyone just froze. No one did anything. And I, I too was like torn as to what I should do because I didn't want to do anything to cause him to react, drop the dog. You know, it was just this eerie moment where he's howling and holding this animal outside of the, the car window. And more than that weird memory is the that I have, a, more than that weird memory, I have a memory of everyone just kind of not really reacting to him. Like no one really kind of did anything. They, I eventually kind of pulled his arms gently back into the, to the vehicle and kind of got the dog back on the seat and we continued driving, but no one reacted. It just kind of avoided dealing with it. We get to the place, the house where he was filming this thing that he was late for, I suppose, for the day. And we walk in. Meanwhile, I've been bombarded by text messages and, and calls and conversations with everyone seemingly so stressed about- Objection, hearsay. All right. Just, just don't tell us what somebody else said, just what you observed. I understood everyone was stressed. They seemed stressed to me about the tardiness. Where is he? Let's get him there, you know, so we get him there. And no one reacts when we get in. I mean, we walk into this house where everyone was waiting for him, and everyone smiles and says, you know, hey, boss. Objection, hearsay. Okay. So, okay. Sorry. Let's, uh, can, Michelle, can we pull up uh, 167A? I think we is B, B the one that's in? 167B is already in, right? It's, oh, it's A. Okay, then go ahead and pull up A. Does your honor show that one to be in, 167A? D defendants, it's, I'm it's, sorry. Well, yeah, it, this might be your 167A, but it's in evidence as a plaintiff's number, and I'm not sure which plaintiff's number it is. I don't need it in twice, so. I, I would agree. Do we? Your Honor, I don't think it's this version of the photograph okay, that's so been admitted. So, so it's, it's a, a it's different a, version. It's same a different photograph, but a little different. Is that what we're? It's not the same photograph. Okay, not the All same. Right, photograph. Well then, then we'll go with it. Then what's your, what, okay. what number is it? Do, do you recognize this photo? Yes, I do. Please tell the jury what it is. It's a picture I took of my breakfast table uh, that morning. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 167A. 167A. Any objection? 
Your Honor, may we approach? Sure. Fifty-seven A is in evidence. You can publish. So we may we publish that. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, and Amber, you said that you took this that morning. Is that yes. correct? Could you tell the jury what the box is that has the property with the skull bones? Property of JD. Um, that's Johnny's. Um, drug box. I've seen it used for pills, but at the time it was um, bags of Coke, like okay. dime ba bags of Coke. Okay. And what are these white lines on the table to the left of that box? That is cocaine. Okay. Um, and do you know what is in these two glasses that have kind of a gold colored, colored liquor? Uh, yes. They're different, actually. It's confusing. They're different. Um, liquids. Uh, the one in the back in the larger glass is, um, I, I believe at the time I um, was doing these tabs, or Barocca, that's what they're called. They're little tablets. And um, anyway, uh, I remember at the time that that's what I was putting in my water because I had just come back from France where they sell them. And then the brown liquid in the shot glass is um, Johnny's liquor. I don't know what it's called, but it, we kept it in the freezer. At the time, it was bef, bef, you know, at that time, March 2013, I hadn't, you know, um, I still didn't have the, you know, hard line, I won't even keep that, you know, in my freezer sort of attitude or posture with him. I wasn't that bold at the time, you know, I didn't like it, but I didn't have that strength. I kind of, at that time, I think was doing things like trying to pour it out when I could. So um, what is the bag, the brown bag on the left side? What is that? Uh, that's um, a dop kit. It's um, like, you know, his prescriptions and um, cigarette, tobacco, weed, things that, like that. Okay. And then above it, there appears to be a, a CD of some sort, a DVD, something do you recognize that? Yes, it's um, the single, I, I, I believe it's what it's called, the single he was making at the time. I think that's the song that they were filming a video for, if I'm correct. Okay. All right. Now, did you end up sending a copy of this picture to Rocky Pennington that day? I did. I sent it to my best friend at the time, and, you know, I was like, look at my morning. Objection. Like, Hearsay. Okay, you can't say what you said, but you sent it to your friend, correct? Mm -hmm. Let's go to, to 167, friend. please. And is that the email in which you sent this picture to Rocky Pennington on 322? Yes. 2013? Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of the picture with the redaction of the message on it, uh, with the top, with identifier redactions, and we take out the rest of it. Uh, all right, any objection? No objection. All right, so we'll do those redactions, 167 in evidence with redactions. All right, and may we publish, please? All right, and is this the text message, the email that you sent to Rocky with this picture? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to take you to Let's go to 
Hicksville. Let's tell the jury about Hicksville, May 2013. Can you tell the jury what transpired at Hicksville? Uh, it is a, it's a, like a fancy um, trailer park, like a little hotel in the middle of nowhere, um, set up with these little trailers. And uh, we had made a, a, a plan to go there with friends and um, we were going to do, you know, like Laffy, as we said, Laffy drugs, like mushrooms, eat mushrooms, sit by a campfire. Um, there's really not a whole lot else to do out there. It's like a getaway. Um, we had made this plan, uh, and it was going fine. It was like a, you know, kind of like a party out in the desert, um, with a few friends and campfire and music. And, um, I, I don't know who brought, somebody brought MDMA, um, was being passed around and somebody who, who took it, um, kind of was starting to feel the effects of it, I guess is the best way to describe. She kind of reacted in this way where when the MDMA hit her, she kind of, you know, we were sitting around a campfire, all of us, and she kind of just leaned into me and put her, you know, head on my shoulder and kind of grabbed my arm. I took it, you know, to be the effects of the drug. Um, and, <sighs> Uh, I think I had eaten a, a mushroom cap, um, but was not feeling anything at the time. Um, I don't remember feeling anything um, because the night just kind of changed pretty dramatically um, before I really felt anything of the effects of that. But that was the environment we were in, and um, and. As soon as she kind of did this thing where she leaned into me, um, Johnny um, gets really activated. He gets really upset and he starts, well, at first it, it, she thought he was kidding too. I, she thought he was kind of making a joke. I think we all did. Everyone kind of responded at first, you know, that, that it, like it was a joke, but he he was like, um, hey man, what are you doing? You know, what do you, what do you, what do you think you're doing? And she kind of giggled and kind of leaned into me more. And I knew in my body just instantly that it wasn't a joke, um, but she didn't. So she's kind of still attached to my arm when he says it again to her louder. He says, hey man, you think you're touching my fucking girl? You think you're touching my fucking girl? That's my fucking girl. And he gets louder and louder. And she kind of did this thing half understanding what was going on. I think she kind of started to cry at this point, but she kind of threw up her hands and Johnny grabbed her, her wrist and kind of twisted it and pulled her into him and said, do you know how many pounds of pressure it takes to break a human wrist? Huh? And he kind of held her and she just, she just looked frozen. And uh, she's crying and she was just denying, understanding what was going on. I stepped in. I kind of take Johnny's arm around, kind of take Johnny's hand and kind of we start communicating. I don't remember if he immediately was accusing me or if it was sometime after. I wish I remembered, but we we agreed that we'd go and talk about it in the trailer. Uh, so we walk to the trailer, um, and when we're in the trailer, Johnny, by the time we get into the trailer, Johnny tells me that I, um, had been instigating the, uh, like, you know, in asking for this and that I had invited it and that I, I hadn't been honest with him about my relationship with this woman and not to I didn't really know her that well. I mean, I actually don't know her at all, but I had met her. And I remember in the trailer, um, he's accusing me of, of lying about it and that I, you know, that I, that I had something with her. I'm trying to diffuse that. I'm trying to calm him down. And um, he just turned all that, um, it seemed like he turned all that rage onto the trailer itself. 
and he just started smashing things. Um, he picked up something on the table and threw it right into the glass cabinet. Um, he hit with his hand um, a, a wall sconce. Um, he cleared the tabletop on the little fold down, um, like kitchen dining room area in this trailer. I mean, it's a trailer. So there's only so much you can do. And he's screaming at me, screaming at me. Um, and I, I, I uh, eventually go back into the back, the bedroom area. Uh, he comes into the bedroom area. We had what I can only describe as um, a, uh, uh, it sounded like nonsense from him. It wasn't making sense. And I realized that he's just probably really high um, because it wasn't making sense anymore. It wasn't like a direct accusation. I wasn't, he wasn't hearing me when I was saying I, 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 I wasn't involved, wasn't cheating on him. I wasn't secretly trying to engage this woman in some sort of sexual affair. Um, and, and then it became clear to me, he was like looking for something. He, um, cleared things off the bed. I went into the bathroom and as I come out, um, he's at, he asked me where it is and how long I've been hiding it. And I, was, I was like, what are you talking about? And he says, you know what I'm fucking talking about. You know what I'm fucking talking about. Be honest with me. Where are you hiding it? And he kind of like makes to look into the bathroom. Um, and I gestured to the bathroom, which was to my right. I kind of like gestured to him and I said, like, what? Well, what am I, where am I going to, what am I hiding and where am I going to hide it? And, and we're standing in this little hallway area outside of the bathroom and he starts, you know, pat, pat, what it feels like patting me down or saying he's patting me down. I can't recall, but he ripped my dress, the uh, strap top part of my dress. I had just dyed this thing um, myself, pink. And I, it's just one of those things I... I was like, you know, that's my, I just finished that dress. And um, he's like grabbing my, my, my breasts. He's touching my thighs. Um, he rips my underwear off. Um, and then he, he proceeds to do a cavity search. He was looking, he said he was looking for his drugs, his cocaine, his coke. I was wondering how I, somebody who didn't do cocaine and was against it, that was in and of itself causing problems in our relationship. How could I hide, why would I hide his drugs from, like, I, like he was insinuating that I was doing it or something? It made no sense. And... He was telling me we're doing, we're gonna, we're gonna conduct a cavity search, shall we? Like, just shoved his fingers inside me. I, I, I just, I just, just stood there staring at the stupid light. I didn't know what to, you know, I didn't know what to do. I just stood it just stood there. While he did that, he twisted his fingers around. I, I don't I didn't say like stop or anything. I just so, so the next morning, um what tr what transpired? I remember thinking that Johnny would change his mind, um, and it would be. Um, yeah, I thought it would end differently. I I kind of. I don't know how 
we went to bed that night. I don't know how I went to bed. I don't know how I slept. I don't know how we woke up. I don't remember having a conversation with him the next day. I don't remember talking to him about it or confronting him about it. I, I remember wanting it to be okay. I remember just wanting whatever fucking weird trip, excuse me, whatever trip that was to end, you know, just to be over and for it to just go back to normal. Um, and I remember my friends were out by the pool, like the, the, there was a pool in the center of the trailer park. And I remember putting on my, you know, just putting on my face and going back into this like crap, you know, and, they, and I remember seeing my friends by the pool thinking they were just having a great time and no one knew what was, you know, I felt so lonely, like no one knows what's, Everyone was just having a good time, you know, like normal stuff. So I just smiled and made a joke about how trash the trailer got. And we had to get the manager uh, who started off furious that Johnny had wrecked the thing. And then he had this like black mesh tank top, not tank top, but it was like a meshy kind of shirt on. And I remember he came into the trailer and looked around and was like, whoa, what happened here? Whoa. And Johnny had an exchange with him. And I remember wa watching this man be so charmed. It was just a kind of a surreal experience. And, you know, it, it just went away. You know, that just got fixed. We walked out of the trailer at some point. My dog stepped on a bee. We went to the vet and went on with our you know, vacation. We actually went to another location after that and then eventually went home and went about our life. I'm going to ask you to take a look. Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 176? Did there come a time that you wrote an email? Objection, leading, and hearsay, Your Honor. May we approach? All right. In June 2013, how were you feeling about your relationship with Mr. Depp? May we have the exhibit taken away okay, from sure. Thank you. I, um, by June, I was so torn. I was so in love with this person because when it was good, it was so good. You've never felt love like that. At least that's how it felt <laughs> so much. I felt like he recognized me and I recognized him and there was just something there that that is the love of my life. And he was, he was, but he was also this other thing. He was also this other thing. 
And that other thing was awful. Awful thing that would come out and take over. And it was, you couldn't see the Johnny I loved underneath it. It was this other thing. And no one told him. No one was honest with him. No one, you know, he'd pass out in his own vomit. He'd lose control of his body, his, you know, he'd lose control and everyone would clean up after him. I cleaned up after him. I mean, this man lost control of his bowels and I cleaned up after him. His, his, his security cleaned up after him, changed his pants in front of me. He would pass out in his own sick. You know, and then he'd walk around saying he didn't have a problem until he did, until he couldn't support it anymore and he'd get clean and he'd get sober and then he was this thing again, this thing that made me feel so loved, that made me feel like, like my, like my soulmate, as cheesy as that sounds, I just felt like he knew me. And I recognize something in him, either some part of my makeup and my background or something that I just got it. And I loved him and understood him. It, it just got so scary, the other part of him. And I, in June, I wanted, I wanted to leave him. I wanted to, I didn't want to leave him. I, I wanted to want to leave him. I wanted him to get better. And he expressed to me so many times when he was in that period of getting clean and sober, he would tell me, you saved my life. Baby girl, you saved my life. Everyone else was saying that to me and I believed it. You know, if it, everyone else was saying it, he was saying it, I thought just like his other friends who had gotten clean and sober and stayed that way, his older friends, these rock stars that he hung out with that had like, gotten clean and sober and they had 20, 30 years, something, you know, I thought, and Johnny told me he w would be that person, that he was going to be that person. And I believed it. I had so much, I looked at that man twice my age, you know, I was 25 looking at this man twice my age and I saw hope and like promise. I had so much hope. You know, the whole thing, kids and growing old together, sort of hope if it was just for this one thing that he could do, which would save his life, which would be to get clean and sober. And I believed it. And I wrote this letter to myself among many letters to myself. Objection, because hearsay. I thought, All she did was refer to that she wrote it. She isn't saying what she said. I'll overrule for that. Thank point. you. Okay. I wrote that letter because I thought it would be read to him. I could read it to him. I could say it to him in intervention, you know, in help. And he would, he would later thank me for, as he did, as he used to thank me all the time for saving his life. Just, I. Did there come a time later in June that you finally met Johnny's kids. <sighs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, um, I finally met them in the summer of 2013. I had been with <clears throat> Johnny for over a year maybe like a year and a half at this point is my best guess. And I was dying to meet them, you know, dying to get to know these kids. I felt like I knew them already. Uh, I had his daughters uh, and actually, and Jack's, it, both, both of his kids art on my fridge and I had never even met them. You know, Johnny had brought them over one day and kindly given them to me. And I had them up on my fridge cause I felt like I knew them just how much he talked about them and, I finally got to meet them um, at the Lone Ranger premiere 
at Disneyland. Uh, yeah, summer 2013. So then I'm going to jump to, and, and it's not much of a jump, to June 26, 2013. Um, there was a plane ride to Russia with Johnny. Do you recall that? Yes. Well, tell the jury about that particular event. Uh, well, that was the first and last time I ever um, <laughs> decided it would be a a decent idea to do drugs with Johnny. Um, I did MDMA with, or <laughs> did MDMA with him on the plane, which was as stupid as it may sound. Um, I just had never, I was very against, obviously the cocaine had been a, a problem. I was very much against him using cocaine. I was against the drinking, supportive of the sobriety, I, you know, but I'm 26, maybe, uh, ish, and I, w I wanted, you know, I had never heard of anyone making MDMA, uh, like what I had, I had done MDMA before, you know, I thought it's a lovey drug, it's a, you know, it's like a kind of, I never knew anyone to uh, get violent on it, and, um, I, you know, I thought, well, this is a relatively contained environment. Maybe this will be different. Maybe I can be a good cop and be part of the, you know, like I don't have to be the lesbian camp counselor all the time, as you would say. You know, I can maybe be the fun girlfriend. And I learned the hard way that that was not happening. <laughs> um, so what happened? Well, we took um, we took MDMA. I took a, a capsule. Um, it's like a powder in a capsule. I took a capsule, and Johnny took uh, several. I didn't count, but um, you know, it's very different when you see someone take one versus a handful of something. But nothing that seemed to set any alarm bells off, and it, things were going fine until. Um, until the flight attendant got involved. The flight attendant came by, was engaging with us. Uh, I, I, I don't think that they're really, it felt like it was before the effects of the drug um, took over, it was, so it was relatively quick, soon after we first took our dose, if you can say, and the flight attendant, um, Johnny offered her some, she of course said no, and then after some back and forth between them, Johnny convinced her that it would be fine, so she acquiesced and took uh, MDMA with us. It's just, and within you know a few minutes go by, and she, the the same thing happened um, that happened on the mushrooms uh, at Hicksville uh, with the woman Kelly Sue, who I've told you about. Uh, flight attendant got friendly with me, but just friendly, just like MDMA friendly, you know, was kind of, I'm a woman, he's a man, so she was naturally, I think, more comfortable with me physically. She kind of leaned into me and kind of sat on the arm of the chair I was sitting in. I mean, after all, she she's on drugs, and um, Johnny uh, grabs, grabs her hand and tells her not to touch me, and she kind of reacts um, in a way, uh, like, you know, like she's defending herself and was trying to clar clarify and um, he grabbed her by the wrist and slammed it down on the table and told her he could break her wrist. And I remember thinking, I've heard this before. And that was a pattern that would repeat itself a few times. These things would happen in these kind of cycles where there'd be a certain element that would get filtered for a while, whether it's an accusation or a gesture, and that would be the thing that he looped on. I called it looped, loops. And he grabs her wrist and he tells her he could break her wrist. She cries instantly, denies it, is so apologetic. Go, eventually, he lets go. She goes to the front of the plane where the flight attendant you know, normally hangs out and the doors close. And I don't see her much of that whole flight. <clears throat> uh, we land in Russia. And I don't really remember 
you know, any, there was, I don't recall any violence on the plane um, between Johnny and I, but I remember feeling this tension because I was wondering when uh, it was going to aim at me because he had this particular thing about, well, at the time I understood he had a particular thing, a sensitivity about me and women because I had had a female partner. So I, I was feeling nervous anxious and um i remember we had a very quiet ride at least i didn't say anything um to the ride to the hotel and almost as soon as we get into the hotel room um johnny's accusing me of effectively having um en engaged that uh ca caused that um i of course deny it uh, point out what i thought was obvious that, you know, like we'd, we'd given her drugs, you know, it's, wasn't an affair, wasn't, you know, and I'm trying to argue and defend myself at the same time. And um, at one point, Johnny just shoves me, like, I mean, just shoves, shoves me hard. And I fall back onto this glass table. Um, I catch myself on the table. Um, I don't know how some furniture got knocked around. There was a, you know, I, I, I'm trying to stand up for myself. I'm trying to stand up, literally. I'm not, you know, at this point, I don't even try to hit back or try to run. I'm in this hotel room trying to do my best to fight mostly the verbal accusations, but also I try to stay on my feet, you know. Um, at some point, uh, Johnny whacks me in the face. And I don't even... I don't remember feeling pain or like awareness of my nose or anything. I just, I don't remember thinking that. I remember kind of crying and feeling, I went into the bathroom and I, I wanted him to have a, like, I, I, I just remember wanting him to realize what had happened. I wanted him to kind of snap out of it. I wanted him to care. I wanted him to realize what was going on because a big part of this I felt like he wasn't aware. There was a sense that he didn't know what was going on. You know, again, I don't know how much of the drugs or alcohol is a part of this, but I remember crying. I came out at some point because I don't hear him in that room. I remember we had been arguing in the main room, but I went out to the hallway, which is where I presume he walked out, and his bodyguard, Jerry Judge, was in the hall. And I don't recall seeing Johnny in the hallway, but I remember seeing Jerry Judge, who um, gestured to Objection, my nose. hearsay. She's just saying gesture. He hasn't said anything yet. All right, uh, gesture's fine. I'll overrule the objection. Um, he gestures to my nose um, and holds out his um, handkerchief, like a cloth handkerchief. Uh, and I instantly felt just felt really embarrassed. Do you, I felt like I felt ashamed. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I just felt like just really embarrassing. And I went inside the, the room. What if any in injury did you have? I had a little blood coming out of my nose. Uh, I didn't know it. I didn't feel it at the time until Jerry gave me the Jerry. Let me know. Okay. And I went inside the um, the hotel room and uh, it is embarrassing as it is. I, I, um, I, I remember uh, just wanting, I remember just wanting Johnny to say sorry. I wanted him to realize it. It's so stupid, but I like the emotional part, you know, I just wanted him to acknowledge that this was um, that he, like he could hurt me. You know, and I wanted it to be okay. I didn't want him to think I was interested in this flight attendant. I didn't want him to think that I would be capable of cheating on him. I was in love with him. I wanted, you know, I just wanted things to be okay. Let's take you to July 9, 2013. Did there come a time that you went for a ride on, you went to the Bahamas and went on a ride, the yacht with Johnny and his kids? Well, it's less like a, we flew out to the Bahamas to his island. Um, 
he was selling the yacht to JK Rowling and he wanted to kind of have a goodbye trip on the yacht. So it was docked uh, off the island and I went with him and his uh, kids who I had quickly developed a bond with and loved. And we brought a friend uh, along with us, I think, to kind of help and yeah. Okay, T tell, tell the jury what happened on that trip. Johnny was uh, upset that he had to sell the boat uh, and he was uh, off the wagon again, but he didn't want to tell his kids, so he was hiding it from them. Uh, he was putting it in um, coffee cups and drinking and the behavior just kind of like, he was upset, he was emotional, and it just, he just, you know, that's how he dealt with it, just drink. But there's just no off button with Johnny. So he just kept drinking and the behavior kept getting more obviously drunk. And Lily Rose, his daughter at the time, was young, just like maybe 14. And she started to um, get panicky and asked, started to ask me questions about his drinking. Objection hearsay. Without but, saying what Lily Rose was saying, please continue on. Um, Sustained the objection. Thank you. So she was asking me questions about the drinking. Um, and was very upset. Sustain the objection. Yeah, you, you yeah. can't say what Lily Rose said. Oh, but yeah. you can you can tell gestures. Sorry. You can tell, and you can say what you and Mr. Depp said. Okay. Sorry. Um, so she was upset, and uh, Johnny kind of we were with the kids, and he kind of threw himself off the boat in a half playful way, um, like a dead. He like dead fish kind of way. I don't know how to describe it. Almost like a belly flop. But we were on a skip, like a, a smaller boat parked next to the yacht. And he's jumping. Well, he jumped off the front of it, but kind of in a, a face chest forward way. Like it, it looked a little scary, like not something somebody would do if they're completely OK. You know, it was it, it was started off all of us kind of taking turns jumping off the edge of the yacht uh, into the water and then he at one point kind of throws himself over and it looked a little scary um, the way his body fell into the water and Lily Rose um, started to cry and expressed to me that she Objection here was upset. Objection here, sustained. You, you can't say what she said. You can say, you can tell expressions or observations, but you can't say what Lily Rose said. So okay. Lily Rose is crying, and then the crying becomes like a, like a panic, like, a, like almost like a panic attack, uh, it, it, like rapid breathing, crying, lots of questions. And I'm holding her, kind of comforting her, and Johnny comes in. And within a few, um, within a few seconds, I realize that he, you know, kind of shifted his attention on me. And then he seemed very angry. Uh, he asked Lily Rose to leave. Lily Rose leaves, looks at me, leaves crying, and Johnny in uh, I don't remember the words he used but starts accusing me of kind of like telling on him and calling him um uh you know a drunk in front of his kids I hadn't I hadn't done that I was actually trying to protect Johnny uh I wasn't it didn't feel like my place at all to share that with with his daughter or, or anyone um at the time other than adults who might help with it, but not his kids. So I was trying to tell him, I'm, I was just trying to comfort her. I was trying to protect you. He uh, basically was accusing me of doing this thing and of, of making them aware of his, uh, that he was drinking again. And he slams me up against the, the sidewall of the bedroom of the, we were in the bedroom this whole time but up against the wall of the cabin and slams me up by my neck and holds me there for a second and tells me that he, he could fucking kill me. And that was an embarrassment.
I was embarrassing. It was embarrassment. This whole thing was a joke. It was all embarrassment. I made him feel sick. And I'll, ne I'll never forget. I'm, 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 I was I'm very, very, very much in love with this whole family now. And he's saying I'm embarrassing to him. And that somehow stuck in, in, in me more than the, I could fucking kill you. It just sounded like hyperbole. It sounded like something he was just saying, but the, the names that he was calling me were kind of just pushing me up against the wall by my neck. You know, it hurt, it hurt my feelings. It hurt. Um, I, uh, when I communicated with, when I saw Lily Rose again, we get, uh, I won't say w what she told me, but the next thing we do is we call for uh, a helicopter to come and take us off of the um, boat or off of the island. So we leave the boat, go to the landing um, of, a, 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 of a part of the island, or maybe it was a different you know island we had to get to to leave, and we we take off. I'm holding Lily Rose in my literally holding her under my arm while she's crying and we're lifting off and Jack ended up not coming with us at the last minute he stayed behind um, and we were taking off and I remember being really torn about leaving I I, I felt bad about leaving even though that 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 had happened I, I still felt awful leaving I felt awful leaving him I I, I, I also felt like I had done something wrong you know he, he was mad at me. I wasn't sure, you know, or what I had done. But I, I remember not being, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all these text messages from him calling me all these names, and it barely coherent, barely. And I'm holding his daughter crying. And let me just stop you for a moment, Michelle. Can you pick, pull up Defendant's Exhibit 180? I believe that's already in evidence. It is already in evidence, Your Honor, All so right. if we may publish it to the jury. And Amber, I'm going to ask you to take a look at 180. And this is text messages from Mr. Depp to you. Do you recall these? Yes, I do. And, and are these the text messages? Yes, that's what he was sending me while I was taking care of his daughter. Your Honor, I'm about to go into another event. Should I keep going? I mean, that, that's fine if you think this is a good point to, to break probably, for the day. Okay. I think it's probably a good point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and conclude for today. Again, do not do, read anything about this case. Do not do any outside research and don't discuss it with anybody, okay? Have a good evening. We'll see you in the morning, okay? Thank you. And again, ma'am, since you're still in the stand, you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody to include your attorneys, okay? All right. Anything further before? All right. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you, Your Honor.